And I noticed that we already had like three people waiting in the side chat. Hello, side chat. <laughs> Holly, we can see the great sire monkey keeping face. Holly, what is Holly. That this thing? What the fuck, dragon? <laughs> You do this every uh, single time, Dragon. Especially when it's just the two of us. What the fuck? I'm bored, okay. You know, they say if you're bored, then you're boring. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not ask that fucking laugh. The actual fuck. That was quite a deal, you bitch. That was not a laugh. <laughs> oh, look at that, we live. Uh, I am one. Oopsie daisy. Up in the morning to y'all. Alright, fucking <laughs> Irishman. Fucking talk now. Alright. Excuse um, me, I'm not drinking tea on the side right now. Alright, that was really dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> really uh -huh. fucking dramatic, but okay. Um, well, love you, boss. My grandmother just texted me. Why? <laughs> Who the Wait, fuck? Like, hey, you're alive. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, God. hold on. Is your grandmother is even watching the stream at this point? No, she doesn't know about this channel. She doesn't believe in all this shit. She already kind of yelled at me on Thanksgiving, so. Yeah, she's one of those people. But uh, so we are going to review a hotel. Um, that is fifty-two spooky, minutes spooky long. Hotel. Oh, spooky, spooky. I'm gonna fucking slap you. Um, Turn it on, is... old woman. <laughs> You're too tiny. Um, this is a uh the 1920s Utah abandoned hotel. I guess. You know, he lives in Utah now, so it's kind of interesting that he's actually there. Of course, there's... God damn you, Ad. I was expecting it. It's going to be Ad, isn't it? It's going to be Ad. This podcast is sponsored by Talkspace. The New Year feels like a fresh start, but you've probably learned by now that New Year's resolutions are rarely life-changing. But here's a life-changing resolution you can make today and keep. Prioritizing your mental health with Talkspace. By putting your mental so most insured men can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash. .com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh and welcome back to For the Ooh. I'm struggling, trying to remember how to do everything. <laughs> I know. It's, been, it's been a little while. It has. So it's been a nice little while. It hanging has. out. It has. You know. I mean, as much as we can. I mean, we've been working. A lot. Yes. Now I'm sure uh we're gonna just address the elephant in the room here <gasps> and that this is not uh it's not Monday. It is not Monday. You know, by when this comes out, it will be Wednesday. It will be Wednesday. Now let's discuss that for a second. You know, we moved. So everybody who listens to the show knows that we moved, you know, yep. and that you've been gone. You were gone for like five weeks. Yes. A very long time. Lots, and lots of flights. And the reason is, is because, you know, we're still normal people. Don't don't think that we're rich off of the show or anything. <laughs> it's just <laughs> something we do that we love. Uh, and Megan got a new job, which has kind of changed our schedule around a bit. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed some of the episodes have. I mean, they've still been good, but they haven't been our normal content. We've been we've been flailing a little bit to yeah. kind of keep the show going. Yes, but we 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 kind of need to switch things up a little bit for schedule's sake. Uh, you know the editing, and you know now you work more, and you have most of your. It's looking like a lot of your days off are going to be on the weekend. You yeah. know, and I think it's just going to be easier for us. It's a scheduling issue. Yes. And it makes more sense to release it. I, I'm, didn't we originally release the show in the middle of the week? 
I'm, I'm, I'd have to like go back and, and look, but I think we did. I think originally it, it maybe it was like on a Friday. I don't remember. I don't think this was our original release date. So anyway, our <laughs> long-winded way of saying you went on a Megan rant there. Yeah, I know. Look, we, we're not going anywhere. We. All right, I do have to just Dominic. Yes, I know I left your servers for a specific reason, and I've been ignoring your messages for another specific reason. But can you please not do that in my side chat? <laughs> please. I beg we'll you. Yeah, sorry about the Twitch comment. I can't edit it from here. So. Oh, yeah, no, I already banged uh, that person on okay. this computer. I have both chats up here, so... Yeah, because, like, right when I was fixing the freaking chatting on my Twitch side, I'm like, what the fuck is this? I saw that pop up on here, and then it popped up on here. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so, all right, let's go back to the Megan Ryan. <laughs> We, no, you know, not at all. so don't think the show has ended. We were just having trouble getting it out on every Monday and giving you the kind of show that we like to put out. So in order to keep the ball rolling in the direction that we like to do it and that you guys seem to like it, we're going to start our new day is going to now be on Wednesdays. Same time, though, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can roll that back for wherever else you live as you go west. But yes, because for us, it's 10 o'clock when it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's 10 o'clock right now. It is 10 o'clock right now. <laughs> in the morning. It's on 10 a Monday. In, 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so that that's that's what's going on. I was going to release the whole thing and mess with you guys and tell you that we were just done making the show, but uh, I just didn't get around to it. So, <laughs> uh, so here we are, and uh, yeah, we're back, and this is the new schedule, so make sure you remember yes. Wednesdays. Wednesdays. No more Mondays, Wednesdays, and hopefully maybe it'll help some people, you know, if you really like the show. Wednesdays usually kind of sucks for everybody. So. Yeah, and it comes out on a hump day, you know, right in the middle of the week. Exactly. Everything's like blah. You exactly. Know? So now you can be like, yeah, at least I have something to listen to for an hour at work. <laughs> Yay. You know, when your boss is telling you to get to work, say no. <laughs> say I'm listening to something. I'll be with you in an hour. <laughs> but we and are I back. Could and, it, uh, dude. We actually have listener stories again. We do. We have one for this episode and at least one for next episode at least. So thank you so much, guys, for sending these in. This week, we are actually going to read one from a friend you made yes. up in uh, Montana, big, yes. big sky country up there. Yeah. And I'm super I, I excited. Gotta, I love this girl's name. I know. She's got a, I love this name. Shalina. Shalina. That's yes. such a pretty name. I know. And she wrote in this. Do you want to read it? Yeah. It's your friend. I'd love to. I mean, you're all of our friend now, Shalina. <laughs> You are a friend of the show. Don't go through my pictures, though, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> There's a few. <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. Let's do Shalina proud. Shalina says, hey, guys, thanks for shouting me out in your podcast. But, oh, boy, the peer pressure for telling y'all a story. As Megan knows, my ghost stories aren't too long, but I'll still tell. I can't remember the exact day it was, but I woke up one night and I heard my stepson crying. I went out into the living room to see if he was okay, and he was facing away from me. I walked up and asked what was wrong, and he just kept crying. But as soon as I realized he wasn't crying, he was laughing. I said, baby, what's wrong? And he started turning his head keeping the rest of his body straight. And when he looked at me, I had instant chills. When he finally turned around, he had no expression on his face. He wasn't smiling. His eyes weren't blinking, just wide open. I felt extremely uneasy and uncomfortable and asked again what was wrong. I then said that if he didn't tell me what's wrong, that I was going to go back to bed. And when I said that, he stopped. Complete silence for what felt like an eternity. But in reality, it was for about five seconds. I started walking away, and it started again, the laughing. 
the kind of laugh you hear in a horror movie that makes your skin crawl. So basically, nope. Nope. I kind of sprinted after that. I got into the room, ripped the blanket over my head, and just sat still. I was trying to wake my fiancé up, but that man can sleep through anything and everything. All of a sudden, I hear running up and down the hall. But then, I realized something. I saw no shadows. Nothing indicating that he was running. At the time, we didn't have a door, so we had a blanket covering it as a door, but it didn't go all the way down, so you could still see the hallway floor. We always left the bathroom light on for him, so he could see where he was going, and to not get scared. That's how I knew I didn't see feet, shadows, nothing. Just the sound of bare feet hitting wood, running up and down, and then stopped right in front of our door. I was shaking. I felt paralyzed. I couldn't move at all. I was scared to breathe too loud. Then, all of a sudden, footsteps were walking away from the door and into the living room, and that uneasy feeling went away. I didn't sleep at all that night. I was terrified to go back to sleep or even look away from the door. But the next morning, everything was normal. He didn't remember waking up at all or running down the hall. It was as if nothing ever happened. Okay. Nope. That's, nope. Uh, nope. Maybe nothing ever happened. I don't. Yeah. That is a big fat nope. I no way. Yeah, that that's that that's really fucking creepy. I'm not gonna fucking lie. Um. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. No. I wouldn't really know that the child <laughs> is possessed by something. Like soon, like he was like he was sound like crying. But I knew it in a way, wait, no, there's two different laughter. Many people always mistaking crying from laughter or laughter from crying. Yeah. Like, yeah. nope. Like, if you actually laughing, like, you will see that pe- person face, like, smile. No, but this, the, no, uh, no, 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 uh. no. Soon the child turn around, uh, the whole head turn around and see the eyes wide as saucers and like, have no emotion, no blinking, no nothing. That has to tell you he's goddamn possessed of something. Or, oh, that's a different spirit right there. Yeah, I was going to say, Dragon, there, that could have been some kind of a fucking shapeshifter to look like her stepson to actually be able to turn her fucking head like that. Straight up like, out of the exorcist, though. Like, <laughs> like Yeah. I'm on, I'm gonna say, if I ever see that guy being evil, like, nope, you're an evil child. I'm going back to my room. Put salt on the ground. No, thank you. I'm gonna step in the kitchen and grab a salt and just put a line of salt at my doorway. There's no in hell. I'm like that child in my room. Yeah, that's that. That's a fuck no from me. That's for sure. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Fucking no. When I when they started saying about freaking laughing noises and then fucking footsteps and the head turning, yeah, that's a fucking straight no. Fuck like that. you just seen that in slow motion, like and like you're not my fucking child. My fucking child don't turn their head like a goddamn three sixty <laughs> If that they would break their fucking neck and be dead. No, that's not happening. The thing is, people, like, I don't understand why the woman think that's her child. They're like, well, like, because, he... Jane, because she's, well, first she said stepson, but also she probably doesn't even know that there are shapeshifters out there. That's why she said it. I'm sorry. If you don't know anything about the world, how the hell you live the world, like, came on, like, a normal life? You should learn shit if you don't believe in shit. I mean, not everyone knows about the paranormal world, but okay. 
<laughs> okay, all right. We're going to come back to this. Burn the house down. <laughs> For real? <laughs> like, what? That is... I think that might be the most intense story we've had on the show, actually. Could you imagine? No, no, no. No, no, no. Look. Your child. The way it started with the kid laughing and then turning his head uh, to have an expressionless face. Oh, my God. How do you live in that house? Oh my God. How do you keep living there? Oh, uh, chills. Burn it. Got just chills. Torch oh, it my God. right now and just walk away. That was one of Ugh. a few stories that she had shared with me. Well, hopefully we'll get another one. And, and that one, like, we record in a basement. That has given me the creeps. I know. <laughs> like, really bad. I'm kind of glad the kids are at school. <laughs> Not oh, sleeping. God. I'm going to be looking at our children a little differently now. <sighs> That's crazy. So crazy. Well, thanks, Shalina. Yes. Thanks for that heartwarming story. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving us all those feels. <laughs> I didn't like that. Anyways. Oh, man. Let's move on to another spooky haunted story. And let's this one. do it takes place uh i mean it's not right here it's kind of a little far away but it is in utah and this was actually requested by uh jennifer zillow sears Yay. did i say her name right yes okay. you did and she apparently came across an article on a hotel here in utah mm -hmm. uh, and it has a couple different names it's been a few different it's had a you know it's had a few different lives and it's in its lifespan uh it was I believe it started, it's, it's hard. I can't remember, uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll get to it in the story, but I think it started as the Bigelow Hotel hmm. and then it changed to the Ben Lomond Hotel. And then I think it might've been back to the Bigelow and then back to the Ben Lomond. Oh, wow. And even before that on the spot sat another hotel. So this thing has really- Gone through the changes. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's gone through a lot in, in its time. So, but there's some, there's some interesting things about it, and I, I thought this would make a pretty interesting story. So, yay, we are back to locations. That's right. Oh, Super excited. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I, Halloween was interesting. <laughs> I mean, it, it was good, though. I did like it. But it was good doing I, something different, but I think we definitely enjoy the location. We do. And, and then, things and, like well, that. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, then, because next week we're not doing a location, Aww. we're doing something else. That is very interesting, though, I will say. It is very interesting. Uh -huh. What do you uh, say? All right, I say, let's do it. And away we go. Originally named Fort Buenaventura, Ogden was the first permanent settlement by people of European descent in what is now Utah. It was established by the trapper Miles Goodyear in 1846, about a mile west of where downtown Ogden sits today. In November 1847, Captain James Brown purchased all the land now comprising Weber County, together with some livestock and Fort Buena Ventura for $3,000, equivalent to $94,000. Why does that sound like he's doing an ad? He, he does sound like he's doing an ad. Say, yeah, uh... one job. Freaking I'm sitting here like such a common name, you know, like you yeah, have the that's... James Brown. My ex's dad was named James Brown. Like now there's this guy. It's just I don't know how many James Browns I've met in my life. <laughs> there's so many out there. But I mean, well, along with that fucking hotel going back and forth with the names, it seems like someone can't seem to make up their mind of the actual name for it. But maybe it has more names that we don't maybe know about that people probably are like, oh, we can, or, you know, we should call it this or name it that, but that might not sound like a good name or something. I don't know. It could be also that, like, they had the Bigelow name in the first place and then it got bought out and then somebody changed the name. And then it gets bought again, and they're like, oh, this was the historic Bigelow Hotel. So then they just change the name back because it's like a historical yeah. thing. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Dollars in 2022. The land was conveyed to Captain Brown in a Mexican land grant, this area being at the time part of Mexico. 
The settlement was then called Brownsville after Captain James Brown, but was later named Ogden for a brigade leader of the Hudson's Bay Company, Peter Skeen Ogden, who had trapped in the Weber Valley a generation earlier. There is some confusion about which Ogden was the first to set foot in the area. A Samuel Ogden traveled through the western United States on an exploration trip in 1818. The site of the original Fort Point of Ventura is now a Weber County Park. Ogden is the closest sizable city to the Golden Spike location at Promontory Summit, where the first transcontinental railroad was joined in 1869. It was known as a major passenger railroad junction owing to its location along major east, west, north, and south routes, prompting the local chamber of commerce to adopt the motto, quote, You can't get anywhere without coming to Ogden. Railroad passengers traveling west to San Francisco from the eastern United States typically pass through Ogden, and not through the larger Salt Lake City to the south. However, Amtrak, the national passenger rail system, no longer serves Ogden. Passengers who want to travel to and from Ogden by rail must travel via front runner commuter rail to Salt Lake City and Provo. Renowned Danish impressionistic writer Hermann Bang died in Ogden in 1912 during a lecture tour in the United States. In 1972, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints completed construction of and dedicated the Ogden, Utah Temple in Ogden. The temple was built to serve the area's large LDS population. In 2010, the LDS Church announced they would renovate the Ogden Temple and the adjacent tabernacle. The work began in 2011, included an update to the exterior the removal of the tabernacle's steeple to make the temple steeple a main focus, and a new underground parking garage and gardens. The temple was rededicated in 2014. Because Ogden had historically been Utah's second largest city, it is home to a large number of historic buildings. However, by the 1980s, Several Salt Lake City suburbs and Provo had surpassed Ogden in population. The Defense Depot Ogden, Utah operated in Ogden from 1941 to 1997. Some of its 1,128 acres have been converted into a commercial and industrial park called the Business Depot of Ogden, colloquially known as BDO. This 1927 Italian Renaissance Revival style, 13-floor Grand Hotel, made of sandstone and yellow brick, is the largest in the city of Ogden, and is considered to be one of the three grandest hotels in all of Utah. It sits on 1.6 acres, straddling the corner lot, and is seen all the way down 25th Street to the railroad station. Unfortunately, it wasn't restored to its original splendor because of the prohibitive cost to do so, but has been updated for the modern guest that has kept your doors open. The modern renovations were done before it was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1990. It was done by private dollars with no help from any preservation group or state grant. Now, the writer of this article and their companion were disappointed by the modernization of the lobby and the cheap 1980s doors that were found on the guest rooms, but they still saw traces of its original artistic treasures, such as the ceiling on the first floor and the wonderful wooden bar in their bar cafe area. Some of the other floors and all of the ceilings were restored. The crystal ballroom is still very stunning with its crystal chandeliers. The elevator has its original decor, which is wonderful. The outside has been beautifully maintained in its original terracotta style that is highly ornamented 
especially on the sides that face 25th Street. Fancy dent tiles are along the top, and the elaborate brickwork is beautiful also. Restoring the outside of this hotel must have been very expensive, but they say they did a beautiful job. Their bar cafe that sits right on the intersection corner, serving beer on draft and has wonderful food. They spent one night and enjoyed their warm hospitality and comfortable bed, sitting room, and other amenities. They go on to say furniture in the room was modern, but comfortable, and that the room was very nice and quiet. Ben Lohman Historic Suites Building was built by Hodgson and McClenahan, who drew plans for this grand lady. When it opened in 1927, it was called The Bigelow, named for local banker Archie P. Bigelow. It was built on the site of another five-story hotel named The Reed Hotel in 1891. The Bigelow was the dream project of businessman A. Peary, who formed a corporation with 300 shareholders to cover the $1,250,000 price tag for this artistic, grandiose symbol of the influx of wealth that the city of Ogden had been blessed with in the 1920s. Each public room had a different theme, with a decor to match. The coffee shop was given an Arabic-style decor, the palace ballroom was Florentine. The business club room had a Spanish design. The English room was a wood panel inspired by a room in Broomley Castle. The Shakespeare room had the jewel of the hotel decor-wise, murals painted by local artist Lacante Stewart. Lacante was a well-known Mormon artist who excelled in painting landscapes of Utah. One year after its 1928 opening, the Bigelow Hotel was chosen to host the Western Democrats Convention, where Alfred E. Smith became the candidate. It was covered in the October 3, 1927 issue of Time Magazine. After the market crash in 1929, rich guests dwindled, and parts of the hotel wound up being used for long-term stays, boarding at a lower price. What a drop in class this was after starting off on such a high note. This brought in the criminal element, who found a use for the tunnel that was built underground, running from the Bigelow down 25th Street to the railroad. In the 19th century American towns, an underground tunnel was often built so commercial and business traffic could continue even during inclement weather. While legal goods and upstanding citizens from the train were brought up the tunnel to the hotel during the day, drugs, alcohol, and prostitutes were brought into the hotel through this tunnel during the evening hours. In 1933, the Bigelow was saved from further ruin by one rich Mormon. Mariner S. Eccles bought the Bigelow Hotel and renamed it the Ben Lomond Hotel, cracking down on the illegal activity. The Ben Lomond Hotel served its guests through the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and even up to the early 1970s, when a new recession began. The upkeep of this hotel suffered due to declining revenue over the years. It is a truth that Historic buildings need a generous upkeep fund, and this resulted in the closing of the hotel. The Ben Lomond had become a fixer-upper opportunity that needed a boatload of money to remain a hotel. It stopped being a hotel by the mid-70s and was used for a variety of purposes, including offices. This means that some of the rooms were renovated to attract a different clientele people wanting office space. This didn't last for long, for the amount of money that was coming in didn't go far, and a lot more income was needed to do the much-needed renovations. In the 1980s, the Ben Lomond Hotel was put up for sale on the real estate market, but no one rich enough was eager to buy it. 
City officials and developers were pushing for its date with the wrecking ball because it sat on a valuable piece of property and was an eyesore that no one wanted. This was in their history, to tear down old buildings for something new. The 1891 Reed Hotel was torn down in 1926 to make room for the Bigelow Hotel. In 1985, Ben Lohman Hotel was saved from destruction by the Radisson Corp, a large hotel chain that was willing to put this grand old lady back into the hotel business, which fits the history of this hotel. The original hotel, the Bigelow, was built by a corporation of 300 investors. Radisson Corp took control and completed a massive remodel. They did some modern renovations, which included taking the hotel's 350 rooms and converting them to 120 suites. Thanks to the efforts of the Radisson Corp, the Ben Lomond Hotel reopened as an upscale hotel once more, now called the Ben Lomond Historic Suites. While the Radisson Corp saved the hotel from destruction, it gave it another life. They also removed some of the original decor, like the wood paneling, painting over or covering some of the woodwork, removed some tile floors, and painted over the once fabulous murals. The original 1927 building cost $1.25 million. It would have cost quite a lot more to restore it to its former glory. So, it is also understandable that they also cut corners, like using less than classy doors for the rooms. However, in 2019, the hotel was converted into an apartment complex, making it the last of Utah's trio of, quote, grand hotels to cease its original function. Today, the Bigelow Hotel and 25th Street have held on to their compelling history as they still hold true to their historic roots. As one explores the hotel and wanders down 25th, they truly feel that they have stuck back almost a hundred years to 1920s Ogden. Oh, wow. So the hotel has been around for over a hundred years now. Yeah. And it, I don't, I've never, I'm new to Utah. Yeah. So I've never heard of this, like, uh, you know, Utah's grand hotels. But when I started doing, like, looking into this place, mm -hmm. I realized that's a thing uh, that, I, I guess because we're from the East Coast, we just don't know much about this side of the country. Right. And I guess, but this was like a hot spot. And Ogden was basically, uh, back in that day, was the, the Salt Lake City of its time or the Provo of okay. its time. You know, we, yeah. live, we live close, to, we've been to Provo. Yeah. So they've kind of sw switched places, but... Um, you know, it's a stark contrast from what I'm used to because I'm originally from New England where they tear nothing down and mm -hmm. literally everything just keeps getting used over and over again. Like, right. you know, old houses that were, you know, are cool, are turned into apartments. It wasn't the case here. They would just tear down and rebuild. Oh, wow. so that's very lost, interesting. Yeah, so they lost a lot of their history. Yeah. You know, you know what, guys, don't get too disappointed. There are deaths and claims here. But I saved that for Megan. <laughs> uh, things did happen in this hotel. And I'm going to just, I'm going to give you a little spoiler before we get into the second half. They didn't just happen here. Oh. They started happening here on opening day. What? Things from the very beginning started no to happen in this hotel. So. Oh. I mean, just keep that in mind as we roll through these uh, ad breaks. <laughs> This podcast is sponsored by Talkspace. The new year. All right. First of all, that was pretty fucking perfect. <laughs> oh, he got better. Oh, he got better. My God. Yeah, he did. Oh, my God. That's funny. So um, as far as like um, the whole the whole thing with the, the railroad and everything being routed through uh, Ogden, I don't know. As far as I understand, like, um, I think, I think Brigham Young, like, owned a bunch of land out there. And so yeah. he was, like, plotting behind the scenes to develop it. I could be wrong about that, but I think that was kind of how that, how that ended up happening. So it was, like, actually, uh, uh, you know, a make money scheme for, for Brigham Young. It's funny because, like, at first, 
Oh, you had some weird background noise. <laughs> um, it was weird because, like, when he first started talking with the weird music in the background, I'm like, the fuck is he? I thought he was making some ad, and then he started going a little bit more into, like, some history, and I'm like, what does this have to do with the hotel? Like, we're here to listen to, you know, what happened in the hotel. And then I finally got to the point where, like, okay, yeah, he's talking about how the hotel was made, of how it become, and who now has it, and whatnot, and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So I'm not gonna fucking, like, yell at him or chew on him about that. Yeah, I mean, you gotta know a little bit of the history around the building, but also, like, from what I know from uh, from my friend who's Mormon, um, it, it's not, like, the Mormons believe in, like, all types of, like, spirits, and so um, it's not out of the like realm of possibility to think that they would even like um you know like propagate these stories to attract attention to that hotel if it was you know mormon owned or whatever so also hi geo <laughs> when i first saw your name pop in the freaking section i'm like holy shit <laughs> hi I, I don't know who you are but hi i probably forget who you are. I don't think you've met Geo. Geo is from actually a group that me and Ape are from uh, with Brojo and Sammy and William and all that. Um, Interesting things. Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think you've met him before. No. He's no, really no. nice. He's also an artist. Um, but yeah, I'm so gonna... what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna... what? <laughs> okay, so this channel, okay, so the reason why I'm shocked that you're actually in this side chat is because, well, this is a ghost channel. <laughs> I never thought you were actually be here. But, uh, welcome. And, um, usually every Monday we do, uh, a stream on this channel. Now, for the past, like, fucking entire month got fucked up, so we've been, like, freaking on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, back to a Tuesday, and it's, like, fucking all over the place. So I've been trying to get the stream back uh, on track on the actual scheduling here. Um, but welcome. And, yeah, so this podcast that we're listening to is actually my uncle, um, who... And we did knows... a stream with her uncle, and it yes. was funny. And also I, want him, it was... I want him to come back on, because that was some fucking entertainment. Ah! The hell? I see a cat. What the cat fuck face. is that creepy thing? It's a cat face. Black cat face. Oh, look, he, I was going to make a joke on, oh, look, he took Chelsea's cap, but then I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that cat is some saving. Hold on. That Hold cat on. doesn't That cat saving. needed a cat of saving, and Jesus in that cat's life. <laughs> that cat <laughs> is tortured. Wait, wait, sick. dragon, dragon, wait until she gets another fucking cat. Oh hell's wait, gonna break what? loose. Wait, hold yeah. on. No, 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 no. You didn't tell this before. Wait, what? Uh, yes. No, no, I... no. No, no, no. Yes. No, no, no. You cannot drop that damn ball in the like you years a day, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that cat gonna be hell is problem right now. That cat is planning Chelsea no. death soon it could be a dumb thing. Oh, I like this baby. I like this. I like this home. I love this lovely home. Like, and she's being clothed. That cat look at her. Up. I'm gonna kill you, home. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be too fucking surprised. But, um, so my uncle and his wife goes to different locations. Not need to they... be no more. Well, I can... This, this was back in November, Dragon. So, 
Um, I guess they're actually coming back in well, this month to start making more episodes, but this episode was back in November. So, um, because I think when they created it, it was on the week of Thanksgiving. Um, but yeah, so they go into different locations, they investigate them, and also people send them stories that they want to tell. Sometimes they can use their actual names, but they don't really necessarily have to, which is what I actually like about this podcast is, well, not because he's family, but because he's actually allowing people to send him stories that they want to tell, and also if they want to be anonymous, they can, but they don't have to use their actual real name, uh, which is cool. But yeah, he then, you know, comes back home and makes an episode for it. And he has gotten better, and I'm actually, that's fucking hilarious that it seems, I, I don't think he even likes the ads himself, because he's just like, fuck these ads. So the fact that he decided to uh, put that sound alert was kind of funny. Pretty good timing, too. But yeah, welcome to uh, the Ghost Channel. <laughs> Feels like yes, a fresh start, but you've probably learned by now that New Year's resolutions stream. are rarely life changing to these. So go head killed. first and management platform. Meet Ramp the first mm, year. No, if your decision decisions, how many ads is there? Get rid of the damn ad. And now Boo's crew. I am Back to the show. <laughs> Shit. Okay, it happened again. I'm. Gonna, we're gonna share with you while we're on the subject of Utah. <laughs> The one thing that we cannot stand about this place. <laughs> and that is the freaking static electricity. Oh, my God. I tried to turn myself on. I turned yours off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the static electricity is brutal. Oh, my God. It's so bad. It's all the layers we're wearing. Boo-hoo. So I have bad. feedback in my head. Oh, my God. We've been shocked touching my microphone again. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just right. had to get that out. Sorry. Tell your story. <laughs> she gotta kill him. I swear, one of his days, she gotta kill him. Surrounded by the natural beauty of Utah. I wouldn't be surprised. For its Italian Renaissance revival architecture, the Bigelow Hotel has a long history of spooky rumors, as well as legends of ghostly guests, including a mother and son who decided to stay together long after death. The Bigelow Hotel has 11 floors with 23 executive suites, six two-bedroom suites, and 58 standard suites, and 12 short-stay suites with full kitchens. It also has event spaces for parties that can accommodate up to 300 guests. Business travelers will be happy to know that the hotel also has a business center and a teleconference service. Spacious suites are ideal for travelers on business, people on short visits, or families visiting Ogden. Short stay condos with full kitchens are for people who want to experience the comforts of home while in Ogden. Matt Cool's public restaurant and bar is an Irish pub-style restaurant that not only serves scrumptious lunches and dinners, but also offers HDTV sports and live Irish music. The hotel also offers packages for bridal showers, weddings, and receptions. There are rooms that can accommodate as much as 300 people or as little as five. The Grand Ballroom has high decorative ceilings and crystal chandeliers, which will make your wedding an unforgettable day. The hotel's wedding packages include wedding consultations, as well as basic setup and takedown of chairs and tables.
Legend tells that the hotel was used as a boarding house. During the Prohibition era, a lot of people came together to make a tunnel that could be used for smuggling alcohol. It was not unusual to find prostitutes and other unscrupulous characters to go in and out of the hotel. People who died at their own hand often find out too late that their death didn't bring peace or make them escape their despair and hopelessness. The 11th floor of the Ben Lomond Historic Suites has long attracted vulnerable people who are in fragile, emotional, and mental conditions. The 11th floor is the place of three suicides, one death from a broken heart and an accidental preventable death. These incidents resulted in some active manifestations. Hearing or reading devastating news about financial issues, pending failure, pending death, or incarceration can push people to their breaking point, causing them to kill themselves in hopelessness and despair. Two brothers who are badly in need of some mental health care jumped out of the windows to their deaths below. Perhaps they lost all their money in the 1929 crash. Disembodied voices are heard in their old room, 1106, and apparitions are also seen there by guests and staff. The devastating loss of a family member, the rejection or loss of one's beloved, can also trigger mental issues that cause a suicide. A prominent female citizen lived in the hotel during World War I. While waiting for her son's scheduled return from the war front, she came to stay on the 11th floor. While her son survived the war, he was killed in a train accident coming home. This tragedy caused his mother so much heartbreak that she went over the edge mentally and self-destructed. She stopped eating and wasted away, dying of malnutrition in her hotel room. Accidental deaths that could have been prevented if the victim was thinking clearly often cause hauntings. A bride who probably got married or was scheduled to do so at this hotel drowned in the bathtub in room 1102. How could this happen? She apparently was alone in the suite or else she would have been rescued in time. Scenario one. Perhaps she had an epileptic fit and drowned that way when her new husband was out or before she was married. Or scenario two, her death could be related to drinking. Alcohol and a hot bath don't mix. But why would she be drinking so heavily? Perhaps she was a bride-to-be and it was the night before she was to be married in the hotel. Perhaps she drank a lot to calm her nerves before taking an ill-fated bath where she fell asleep and drowned. Perhaps she was stood up or they had a huge fight afterward. She may have been drowning her sorrows in alcohol and was very drunk when she stepped into the bathtub where she drowned. In this case, the female accident victim's death was also the trigger of a second death by suicide. Guests who have checked into this room have reported several unusual events. They claim that water in the tub runs by itself, and guests have felt that they were being pushed by an unseen hand. After his mother died, the bride's son came to the hotel to collect his mother's personal belongings. He stayed in the room just beside where his mother passed. He became severely depressed over what happened to his mother and he decided to take his own life. Guests have reported hearing someone talking in the room, others 
have reported seeing an apparition. The elevators in the Bigelow Hotel have been known to act in a very odd manner. They move on their own regularly as spirits travel throughout the hotel in the dead of night. They tend to move randomly to different floors with no pattern. They've been checked by lift engineers on numerous occasions and no fault can ever be found. About a year ago, Bo Woods, a 27-year-old webpage designer and president of the Ogden Ghost Hunters organization, was walking along the third floor hallway in the hotel. As he passed by a room, the door handle began to shake violently. All the rooms on the floor have windows that face out into the hallway. The curtains are kept open when they're occupied, closed when they're rented out. Hood said the window curtain was open and he saw no one inside. The experience really freaked him out. Woods and his group have also captured what they call physical evidence. The evidence captured by most ghost hunters comes in two types, audio and photographic. Quote, I really want to see if there are ghosts. I want to see physical evidence. I want to see Slimer. Woods knows the expectation he does are hit or miss, but he says not to blow off the haunted hotel just yet. Adam Port, security guard at Ben Lomond, says he and others on the hotel staff receive regular complaints of unexplained noises or movements coming from the rooms and empty hallways. Quote, At least once a week, someone complains about noises and stuff, he said. And apart from the complaints, Woods has been to the hotel many times, and on occasions, he has found some pretty startling stuff. He says, quote, There's something going on here. The whole hotel seems to be active. Uh, before we continue with that, um, that's really fucking intense. <laughs> yeah, the whole hotel is act as a shit. I, I know that mean snowman made a joke to put you on a fucking leash, but I think when, if we do go to that hotel, we're definitely putting you on a fucking leash. <laughs> yeah, it's big. Motherfucker, that hotel is huge. We're, we're literally gonna somehow figure out a way to... Not just obviously put you on a leash, but put, like, me, you, him, maybe Ape, and fucking Jenna, because that thing is huge, and we don't act, we, we don't want someone to go in a room by themselves and accidentally commit fucking suicide. <laughs> okay. I feel like I would be the one holding the leash, you know? Like We're, <laughs> we're gonna have a plot of two. We're gonna have a plot of two. The one who have the map of the hotel, and the one who have the lease. I'm like, hey, where the fuck we should we go? I'm like, I don't know, man, but this hotel is scary as hell. Like, it sounds like it's like a, it's like a flower trap. Like, now draw someone in, now like, and eat them and kill them. It's like what the hotel's doing is draw the person yeah. in, and make find even what the person who have worse and kill them nah, or well, something okay. different it sounds like to me that whatever has you know died in that hotel that people don't necessarily know about it until the gate you know scheduled to be in that room alone and that's when shit starts going on so that's why that they're reporting a bunch of shit because no one else fucking would because they're scared mm -hmm. but also like 
fucking eleven floor as was what he said was like Wait, hold on. Can you find this hotel? Hold on. Hold on. I wanna look up this hotel what this hotel look like. I'm sorry. Actually, you know I'm, what? Kinda... I'm curious on how big that hotel is because he said that it got torn down and rebuilt, right? So Hi, Spooky. Oh, look. So, I don't know. It, it, like, it seems like the whole getting drunk in the bathtub and just, you know, like, friggin' drowning, that, that one checks out. And then, like, yeah. Depressed, like, okay. But it's like, it, maybe the 11th floor is just really depressing. I mean, maybe it's the drapery. I don't know. Maybe it's like. That's kind of what it starts to sound like to me, uh, because, like, you know, there's so many deaths on the 11th floor, but what would happen? Like, so are they telling us that every other floor is fine except for that specific floor? Like, I, I found if... it. I found it. I found it. There's, like... A truly 11 floors, Silver. Holy shit, yeah, that thing's huge, man. Oh Hold my on, god. Let, me, let me share my screen here. How the fuck are we gonna even find a way out? It don't I matter don't... if we're gonna get lost. How the crap are we gonna find a way out? How? Sure I went to hotels before. Here. They are like normal size, but damn, this huge. This thing is fucking huge. I can't... I'm not surprised that it has that many floors, let alone that many fucking rooms. I'm reading but, on the wiki, and holy shit. Damn. You know what it is supposed to be news as? What? I school. I high school. Oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> I see, no, nah. no history, history. This building supposed to be a school and much more. Okay, so here's what it used to look like. Oh, hell no. And now it's turned into this giant fucking weird shaped corner. Yeah, because uh, there was a renovation, so they added that whole upper section like way later on, right? Yeah. I mean, it looks nice on the inside, but fucking damn. I'm going to send you the wiki, and you can see what the hell I'm talking about. Okay. Nothing bad, but I'm going to send you the wiki so you know the knowledge. Now it says apartments for rent, so it's an apartment building now? Yeah. It legitly says it supposed to be like one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, but okay, so another thing with not just uh, 11 to 4, but like with the fucking elevators moving on its own like that. Oh, the fuck, no. Y'all, y'all. I ever, like, several, wherever, I think we need more storage. We need to, like, investigate the whole top and bottom of this building. Why do you want to investigate the entire fucking building that we might get lost into? Well, it gotta be a the good fuck is on with you? Hey, See, I this is why be... we need to put you specifically in a fucking leash. God damn. We're gonna put that you on like, one care. of those... Hold on. We're gonna push you on one of those fucking dog leashes that, you know... You can let them go and they just go how many far you think you want them to go and you can just click and just stop and yank them. I'm gonna put you. you know, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna grab the least thing. You get over here. I need a buddy. You get your shit over here now. <laughs> you know, wait, really, <laughs> Silver, what happened? Just put a shot collar on you. Hey, yeah, exactly. Silver, <laughs> I just realized something. What happened huh. at least unclip itself? And like you pull back and then like, then like, drag it. Where the fuck are you? Why this thing unclip? They're like, what are you talking about unclip? <gasps> it's unclip. Someone just cut this. Like, no in hell. I have, I, I, I don't know. Um. Yeah, that's not good. 
So what yeah. am I supposed to be looking at here? Uh, is the history about the whole building. So, you read what you want. No one puts Jack in the corner. <laughs> if you put spooky. me in a corner, I would drag you in the corner. Spooky. Oh, Dragon, you... I forgot to mention to you that, uh, Spooky says that you're his snuggle bunny, and then Big Ed came in and was like, no, he's my snuggle bunny. I will fight you for him. What the fuck? <laughs> that's, that's how it's I'm weird. gonna I'm gonna kill both of you. We have a goddamn mother now. I'm gonna kill both of yeah. you. Yeah. Listen, Big Ed is gonna have he, he's literally gonna make a fucking OnlyFans about you. I swear. I wouldn't be too surprised. That would be funny, though. Dragon, you should be I flattered. Not every YouTube personality gets a stalker like Big Ed, you know? Yeah, exactly. Come this on. is not be proud of that, monkey <laughs> boy. You shut him in the corner now. Hey, don't put him in the corner. That's just mean. No, I'm... I'm uh, how about this? I would put him in a cage. <laughs> Up in the air, in a cage. Oh, like no, no, you're not doing that. I will fucking fight you for that. <laughs> but on, little dwarf child. Bring it, small pussy. <laughs> With my head plus your small like, arms, <laughs> who could <gonna> win? <laughs> what are you saying, Silver, for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, spooky. Oh, are you a famous civil tell me this key information? Both of you are my stalkers. I think I should have a woman on your arrest now. Oh, shit. Uh, Silver. Huh? I found a, another website saying it's a spirit is also a stalker. I'm sorry, what? Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, there's a spirit there. We'll stalk you around the whole hall hallways of the hotel building. So wait, it says here, in 1928, it played a host to the Western Democrats Convention. Huh. With Lord of Democratic Leaders. Hey, <laughs> I found I found the website they read from. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so it's turning into a comp complex and whatnot. So that's not really anything new there. That was just between you and me and Ed. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I know damn well it fucking wasn't. Spooky. When the fuck you become a stalker now? I I I think he became a stalker ever since Big Ed came came in. I think I need a woman of you two, Big Ed and you spooky. Because I think I should put a friend woman on your ass. <laughs> Good luck doing that to him. Because you don't Big know what the fuck that. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go back into this because I'm 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 really curious now. <laughs> we took to the internet to find reviews from everyday people who have stayed here. While there wasn't much to be found, this is what we came up with. Natasha Robinson on Google Reviews stayed there three years ago and says, quote, The only reasons I'm giving it a three is because the place is freaking haunted, especially the room I stayed in, 1102, and because the breakfast was really nothing. Two of the three nights I stayed, the juice machine was broken, and they didn't okay, offer pasta. anything I could Spooky. eat for breakfast. No. No. They did apologize. Then. No. Just no. I'm sorry. That's fucking funny. 
a, a snuggle bunny one. Oh, no. No. Oh, shit. Spooky, how old do you think I am? Oh. What? I could hear that for a while. I don't know what other noise that was. Oh, does that make noise? I said you're old enough to cuddle. Oh, no. damn. Yeah, that you I are. Did. Uh-uh. I'm straight, motherfucker. No way in hell. Mm -mm. That doesn't no. reflect safe no. terms. No, because both of this is probably get out of hand at this point. Is this not funny no more? He said old enough, not fucking god. I don't give a right ass. <laughs> no way in hell. Oh. oh come on. Why won't you cuddle with Mr. Spooky and Mr. Ed? No way in hell. I'm gonna kill both I would of you love to sleep to at this moment. See you guiding part of that. That would be great. That would be my souvenir from Spooky and Ed giving Mr. Dwight a hug. I would Wait, have enough problem. I would have problem. Snowman already knows that you don't like hugs, so he's probably going to try to give you one as well. I only like hugs for my family members. Not none of you. I don't know none I know, of that's my point. Thank God you don't know my stating the breakfast person was unable to make it into work. I'd stay again, but hopefully with a lower price than the 150 I paid per night. I did love the huge jetted tub. Megan Hamlin on Google reviews from two years ago says, quote, if you want an expensive place to rent, well, I guess they're about the same price as everybody but it's not the cleanest place. It is truly haunted. If you want to witness a ghost or two, this is the place to go. Remind you, I never believed in such a thing until one day in 2020, when all that changed. I seen an evil entity start to appear that scared me half to death. And one last review on Google from Joey Diangus from four years ago says, Quote, Fun atmosphere, friendly staff, comfortable room, clean, and very historically interesting. If you're looking for upscale or modern, this is not your hotel. Breakfast was hot, abundant, and solidly mediocre. Skip the coffee, if you like coffee. Two night stay was everything we were hoping for. Truly worthwhile. Our goal was was ghost hunting, and this hotel is a hot spot. While the hotel started its life with grand intentions, it seems its starting footsteps would prove to be deadly. But why is it that people today are so divided on if it's haunted? There are very few reviews. Most of the staff doesn't seem to claim to have experiences, and a lot of people living or passing through do so without an incident. Ogden is known to be a paranormal hotspot. This isn't the only ghostly claim to fame the city has, but maybe we will save some of those for another time. So ever since the beginning of the hotel, there has been death here. And, you know, we've covered a lot of places that it's hard to, like, see why they would be haunted because there never seems to be any historical, you know, like, information on people dying. Mm -hmm. but, but this place has it. Yeah. This place has the 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 evidence of people who have passed away I mean, the stories behind what and not just pass away it. but it, it even though there may be maybe there's not a, mil a million deaths here you have what people might believe to be a murder you have 
suicide Mm -hmm. you know so you have different variations accidental with the person falling down the elevator shaft families coming there to collect their belongings with grief and And sorrow and it's it's wild a lot of emotions there and then you do have people who claim to have experiences now i did look online and you're not getting any evps today because i don't think this is that this is this location isn't that well covered honestly um so there's not I mean, you can find a few YouTube videos that just basically are just doing what we're doing right now, mm-hmm. you know, and talk about okay. some of the haunted history. But yeah, I mean, it's still there today. I forget that I, I can't ever seem to like get a, a real like line on what it's called today. I think it's called the Bigelow Inn and Suites, but it's like an apartment building. Oh, okay. Uh, and I did look it up. And if you want to move there, I believe the going rent right now is about 1200 Oh, it's not bad. That's not terrible. That's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it's an apartment, but yeah, you know, <laughs> it's a nice city. From what I understand, I haven't been there, but uh, pictures are great, and you get to live in the mountains. I yeah. highly recommend. Yes, <laughs> ten out of ten recommend living in the mountains. Yes, yeah, <laughs> freaking great. That's so great. We love it here. Don't get me started. But with everything that we've heard, you know, there's more. See. From, all right, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. We've covered locations with less mm-hmm. that gave me more of an idea of how I feel right. than this place that has more, and I have no idea how I feel. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought you were going to go right into asking the question. I'm like, I, I oh, thought God, about it. I thought about what, it. <laughs> what am I going to say? Like, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm torn on this one. It's very... It's it's a difficult one, and there's not a lot on this location. Right. Like, I pretty much pulled from everything I could find uh, outside, I'm, for this topic anyway. I mean, there's there's other stuff that, you know, because this is like a, this is a historical building in this area. So, I mean, it's been talked about, but just not in the frame of being haunted. Mm-hmm. Um, but there has been stuff that's come out. There's just not a lot. I don't think there's ever been any ghost hunts here, like any major ghost hunts here okay it's not like the bigelow hotel is hosting events for ghost hunting like a lot of locations that we talk about people are just maybe hearing about it and like going to do their own little yeah like they're going to rent a room and walking around a hotel yeah same thing that people do at like the stanley hotel yeah but i think the stanley hotel does actually offer ghost tours oh yeah they definitely do (laughs) but i mean the time has come that i do need to ask you oh god is it real? So let the people know. Is it real, Megan? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I. <laughs> That's not an acceptable answer. I, I know. Well, hold on. Let me go on a ramble here. Because, you know, Megan Cause, answers. Because it's for the booze, yes. <laughs> so I think uh, with this place not having an abundance of evidence or anything like that, um i think i'm gonna have to go on the route with the emotional side of things and the historical side of things like you're gonna cry when you say it no oh you said the emotional not my emotion you know i will sorrow and we're gonna see on the news a man got killed by his wife thanks welcome (laughs) are you gonna go yeah i forgot what i was saying thank you (laughs) this this train derails quick <laughs> well usually you just let me finish what i'm thinking <laughs> it's a different so, different time of day we're recording different things are going to happen now <laughs> so funny thank you you're welcome <laughs> so i think you know the emotional and mental and i guess the traumatic things that have gone on here and the emotions that go behind it whether it be from the people who are committing the suicides and you know the family members that may be coming to pick up their personal belongings from their family member that passed away there's a lot of emotions that go into this place and I feel like you know we've talked about before like the emotional attachments to like the land and things like that Mm -hmm. and I I think that maybe some of that has fueled the things that happen here Do I feel like it's crazy haunted? No. Uh, Do I think that things happen here? Yeah, there's absolutely a possibility for that. Okay. That's all I got. I don't know. I I really don't know how I feel about this. You were right. This is our usual weekly rant. Is it haunted or not? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) You said, 
uh, the only thing I got out of you was I don't think it's I don't think it's like haunted a lot. <laughs> so, is it yes or no? It has potential. <laughs> Amazing. So I don't Great. know. I'm gonna say like like a 60-40. Okay. Like 60% it could be haunted. Okay. So it's five slices of an eight slice pizza. <laughs> yes. All right. Mm, we're having pizza for lunch. I'm I know. Excited. I'm hungry. I know we do. So what about you, babe? That's I don't think bullshit. it's on. Okay. I, yeah, it's bullshit. got some cool stories. Yeah. I, I mean, how dare you? It's got some tragic bullshit. stories for that sure. lead to some cool stories. For sure. I mean, but the, I mean, it's recorded history. I mean, de death happened here. People did die. And and very unfortunately, in the 1920s, 30s and stuff like that, people seem to off themselves um, for like economic stress a lot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I we, mean, were, we run into that a lot. We did this, you know, we read the same kind of stuff at the Cecil as well. Remember, mm -hmm. like people throwing oh, yeah. themselves out the windows. The lady threw her baby out the window. Yeah. So it's just a thing that happened back then. I guess no matter what location we talk about, there's always potential. If you believe in haunted or hauntings and, and paranormal, there's always potential for anything or anywhere to be haunted. Right. But for me, the people who spend day in and day out here, like the employees and stuff, are pretty dead set on it. It's not. So do they say it's not or do they just not talk they, about no, it? No, they just say they no, they talk about it. They just say okay. that they've never experienced anything. Well, because we've run into it before. We're like, yeah, the they don't talk about it. Do uh, not I talk. Forget I know which location you're talking yeah. about, and I can't yeah. remember off the top of my head. Me either. But no, they 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 say that they've just never experienced anything. Hmm. I mean, Interesting. You, of course you got your few who who do, but it's mostly guests passing through. And for me, in my opinion, that tells me it's more of like a maybe they're going there because they think it's haunted so they're okay. experiencing things because they want to experience things mm. but that's just my take on it so okay. i mean with your uh 60 40 <laughs> and my absolute zero i mean there's no seal of approval no nope, there is not this week you know it is what it is it, it happens it is a very beautiful looking hotel from what i understand before the radisson Corps got a hold of it it was a way nicer really well yeah i mean they there was all this like turn of the century decor and stuff and mm. you know they modernized it because that's i mean it's nothing against them that's what they do they they make hotels and yeah they have they can't be like here's you know go bathe in this broken claw tub right so they now, modernized it we see here a lot of buildings that look like you know a lot of older buildings and things like that and in my head i think a lot of them inside have been modernized like this hotel was it, I don't know. It it depends. I don't know this area. Like if you asked me back on the East Coast, I would say probably not. Mm -hmm. Like especially again, where like in New England, like maybe some of dude, some of those apartments that are used to be houses look exactly like the house. They've just put front doors on some of the entry levels. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but they look the same. A lot of them are really run down, and even though they're run down and stuff, it's like I, I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's there's a charm to it yeah there's definitely oh, for sure. a charm to it and um, my my point in bringing that up was i went to uh the bank for my work and i walked in and there was literally like wood paneling everywhere like the walls the ceiling there was like an old brass staircase mm -hmm. and like the the like the vault or the safe mm -hmm. i mean it was a vault it was straight up a vault it had like an old tiny door on it it was insane yeah, but and i fully did not expect it to look like that inside it's a bank i think bank is a little different than where you live and stuff like that because mm -hmm. there's an uh an appeal to those older style banks i don't know it was it was insane or i've never seen it it could have like been it. renovated and they just renovated what was there to make it look exactly like it did i don't know uh, but from what i understand from reading is like the history of this place is pretty well known like this part of the country for tearing down historical stuff or it's kind of sad remodeling history yeah i, I it's agree kind of sad but that's it bigelow hotel go stay there go tell me i'm wrong i'd love to i'd love to hear yeah maybe i'm wrong i don't even know if you can stay there now i don't know if it's exclusively rentals now uh like I said, you have when you look this place up, you had to look up two different places. So it's a lot of back and forth. Um, but yeah, so where can they find us? They can find us on Instagram 
at for the booze underscore podcast and on Facebook at for the booze. You can also find us on X Twitter at for the booze over on YouTube at for the booze and some numbers. But if you look up for the booze, you'll find us <laughs> on if you are one of the few people on blue sky, you can look us up. We're on there now. Yay. Also, if you want to check us out on TikTok, uh, we're on there for the booze. And I actually let out a little like, um, little teaser little teaser idea of Ooh. what might be coming for next week <laughs> and is that it instagram facebook yeah, yeah yes, i think that was it, it. and yeah. also if you'd like to be one of the good people like shalina yeah is yeah. that what it is yes oh, i got it <laughs> I was gonna call her Almost. Chan- I was gonna call her Chanel for some reason. <laughs> Shalina, yes. If you want to be one of the cool kids like Shalina and Eric from uh the stories coming next week, write it in to for the boost 12 gmail.com or if you have a suggestion like Jennifer on this one. Yes. Uh, you know, same thing. Let us know on social media or email us or just to say hi. And one more very important thing to do. Rate and review. Five stars. Yes, rate and review anywhere you can for podcasts. That's right. But it seems a specific place is the best. Apple. I know because you want to say iTunes. I do. I I do. I want to say it all the time. It's because you're old. (laughs) It's because you're old. I am. (laughs) (laughs) Got to get get my iTunes account ready. (laughs) But I guess this is going to end it for this week. So we can, I can go edit this and put it out by our new release date. Wednesday. Yes. Well, thank you everybody so much for listening. We are so happy to be back and we will see you in the next one. Okay. Bye. Bye. I gotta go edit this thing now. It's kind of sucks. Oh, okay. well, um, that was a very long, long ending. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But damn. Um I think that might be maybe the first location that they actually haven't physically gone to. If my in my opinion. I, I I truly feel like if we ever go there, where the hell are we gonna start? No, like, where are we gonna start? <laughs> it's fucking beyond me. I mean that place is fucking the thing huge. Is, that place is owned. Do we need to ask the owner and like, hey, we want to like hunt down like a certain location, like a certain spot of this building? Like, could you tell us like what is the most haunted location on what floor we should go on, or I what mean... is what? Because if we go there, like, we're gonna spend the night there. Well, like, yeah, but like, I think on what to actually get confirmed to actually be in that place was to maybe email get a hold of the actual owner and you know talk to them a little bit just to see if we're really allowed to I think before we should do anything I think we should walk ourselves up to what they can know of like okay how are you good knowing stuff and they watch the video oh wow you're actually good like oh wow you actually got a lot of stuff you like um the YouTubers um like I'm saying if we want to do stuff we need to be recognized our work not be of uh, like two okay. new kids and like, a couple of like people don't know how to do shit like, I should say that like well like, many people like want to know I mean we got fucking Stephen and Megan like you know they're they're the ones that actually really did the episode we're just reviewing it. Yeah, I know, but we are planning to go this location though at least. Well, somewhere. yeah. So but like, if, if there were you know anything to happen, we would you know contact them and be like, hey, you know this, this is what this happened. happened. This what happened. Like this what happened and this what happened. And like really, and is anything else like yeah, um, like I think like Dragon have a video of some spear was following him around. You heard well, footsteps right behind me or something. Actually, it's funny because they do live in Utah, so we can literally just go to their fucking house, <laughs> be like, hey, <laughs> hey. Look at? we went to this and that, and you know, they would probably like interview us on their channel, probably, which would uh, be interesting. It- it's gonna oh, be entertainment. They're frozen, but 
but I think we, before we go there, interview them, I think we should have like footage or like audio recorded or something. I know. No, hold on. I, I didn't say we're going to interview them. They're going to interview us. I did not say that. that before yes, you that, did. No, I did not. Chad, yes, what did I say? You said them. No, we did not. I said them. Before we go to them. No, I said mm-hmm. go before we go to them. We need video and shit. So for whatever you think of, use this weird mind, child. This no, I don't mind. have a weird mind. What the fuck is wrong yeah, with you? Yeah, you think I say this and that. No, person. because, no, that's what I fucking heard. Uh-huh. 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 Sure. 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 Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna say, mm-hmm. I didn't say no interview. Sure. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep my belief. Jagan said what he says he said. What the fuck? You, I don't don't trust your words. I don't know. I don't trust Spooky at this moment. (laughs) You don't even trust Spooky. Damn. No. Even trust Paul. I will just let him fall down on the flight of stairs. (laughs) Okay, that's just me. Don't worry about Dragon Spicky. I, I'll put him on the leash. <laughs> Not gonna work. I, I, I think the around. no Dragon. I think the entire team has agreed to put you on the leash. You know, you know what this called on hands is called thumbs, dumbass. It's called thumbs. Yeah, well, you need to fucking keep track of where the fuck you go like your dog, okay? Wait, I know where the fuck I go. I do. But that hotel is huge. Oh, Lord. You laugh, but we don't know what the hell the building like layout is yet, don't we? No, but fucking... I... I... You think I'm gonna be like Jess? Like this way. No, wait, no, it's this way. Like, woman. Like, you have one jab. What the fuck, Spooky? See, this is why I don't trust fucking Spooky. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That would be, um. How about. Fucking Ed's no. entertainment, but fucking no, <laughs> but no. The, the thing is, let's then think like a logical heel. Like mm. yes, we all make funny of jokes of oh yeah, put like least. The thing is, least gonna not gonna do shit because we had to split up anyway. Depending then, like, on no, depending on the actual kind of leash that we use. We could create something to make it as a leash for you. Can we just put something on my back? Like something? Because the thing is, Spooky think some kinky shit, and I don't trust (laughs) him. He's gonna spread like wildfire. I don't trust him with that. Like, one bit. It's either between him or fucking Big Ed that's got some weird I don't trust both of them. I don't trust both of them. But I think I'm kind of excited to go to the Bridgewater location. Oh, like where I'm in? Yeah, and be honest, I'm not going to wander in like, like, oh, do-do-do, I'm going to be a dumbass and get myself lost. No, uh, I'm going to be the place you're going to see me. And like, like, hi, I can see you. You can see me, right? Well, I think and what we might actually do for you is put one of those, like, light yellow, uh, orange, like, highlighted fucking vests so we can actually fucking see you. The, the thing is, there's a video out there. You get a lot of stuff by yourself. Hmm. Like, you will, like, there's truly, like, a um, research of... If you're in a team, you get nothing. You get like a handful of voice stuff like that. 
but if you buy yourself, like you will get more. Like you will get more events fast, kind of way. They will see you. Oh, look, he's by himself. Like let's try to scale him. Let's get him or something like that. It's true. Watch a bunch of YouTube videos. Like if you think I'm wrong, go for it. Improve. Well, no, I'm. I'm thinking maybe that's why a lot of um not like a whole, like an entire group of people. Has gotten lured into Freetown, but only like a specific one person. I wonder if mm -hmm. that's why. I don't know. Spirits have this this weird of, I like you. I will make noises. Like I will make sounds for you, or like like I'm only hearing like noises or something. It like there's like a um a spirit ability if they make a noise. But you're the only person to hear that noise. It believe that spirit like like you or attached to you only to you or something. I have no clue. I'm still a noob. Not by chance. I'm still a goddamn noob. Well, yeah, you you don't know anything about fucking where I'm at. <laughs> no, but I truly like to listen to noise. Do. Oh God. But I'm well, Julie... you you gotta remember, Stephen did say that he's living fucking Taunton, that he you know has gone into that abandoned um hospital across the street from where he lived. So, you know, that's a spooky one, there. You live too next to a. How he even gone into fucking Freetown Forest himself? He's drawn on the fucking clues and shit. So, like, I'm not too surprised that he actually got in there, but, you know, teenagers are teenagers, to be honest with you. There's nothing that you can really do, but, like, there's so much activity in Freetown that no one knows about. Okay. A, okay, you know this one town? There's a town. Huh. There's a, really a ghost town. Like five, like there's a handful of people that still live there. There's a ghost okay. town. I forgot what name, but it's so haunted. All the locations will have the, a lot of activity in their own household. It doesn't matter what you add. Like you will see tons of different activities. Well, there. yeah, I'm not saying it's just in my fucking location. I'm literally saying like it's just a free town force itself that has a lot more activity than anyone else around me mm -hmm. is what I've been trying to say. Um I don't know if Ape has anything because he's been muted. <laughs> was just listening to our bullshit words. And like uh oh, this is very fascinating. I love you guys talking about the interesting things but I have jumping to down each other's throats. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, hold on. He did say he would be uh, making a call, so he'll try to come back in a minute. Oh, no, okay. Good time. Um, <laughs> oh, good. Um, <laughs> no, actually, hold on. I want Gio to say some things, because I know he's new to this channel and everything. So what did you think on what was being talked about let alone the episode itself to you do you have any what? like thoughts or anything like that i'm kind of curious what else goes to i i i am kind of curious on that too but like i might like you said um it sounds like the 11th floor is just more of a depressing floor because it's all emotions people you know I, I feel like we should. I think we should get like crystals, like to protect us, so we don't commit suicide or have these ideas or thoughts. Like, well, yeah, like, I mean, I have some of that here. So, no, we, we need more than that. So for, well, that we dumbass, more. no shit. That's my plan. <laughs> Fucking smack you. But also, uh, like, I am curious if Snowman does come with us. 
I want to hear on what. Well, yeah, because he's got that fucking, you know, demon. But, Are we allowed to say what he has? Or is that fine? I mean, it's a ghost channel. He's. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's mentioned it last time he was on here. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Oh, God. What? what? I found a website actually telling you about what location of the haunted thing. Like, haunted places. Oh. Hauntedplacetogo.com. And I'm um, looking at it. Oh. I don't yeah. think I can trust that fucking website because I, they can I, be created in for some weird mockery or anything like that um but anyway um like we do like do you ever go plan it to go this i feel like we should prepare our mental minds even get mm -hmm. better cameras about um, like body cameras or cameras like can that news like if like if we record one like video, we need to quickly plug the cam in and download all that video in to the storage and unplug it and put in our back pockets, so we can like keep going. Instead of oh wait, I need to go back to the base to get a new memory card, like or like something. Like I like to be paid. You just suddenly got louder. Did you just move closer to your microphone? No, no. Oh, you know what? Probably in that maybe I don't know. I'm just <laughs> some reason I have a problem of talking louder. I have no clue. Is an issue I, I have. It's weird, yeah. But um, I mean, don't get me wrong. So like, I'm more than happy to go to that location, but I don't think I want to go too too far deep into it in that location. I, I would. I would. We should walk around first to get our mind know where the layout is. And we got to make funny jokes of, well, shit, this acts a big, huge place. I'm scared we're going to get lost in here. Yeah, I mean, I'm just oh. afraid that if we do step foot on the 11th floor, that something's going to happen. Like, I don't... I think we should make, um, like, code, like, oh, not like, something to tell one of us, oh... They're like, hey, I feel sad. I feel this and that. Like, could you please drag me off of this floor? Like, something like, like yeah. going downstairs and get rid of this kind of way. So we're going to sit down and have, like, keep, like, each other so we don't walk away. So I did mm -hmm. find a place actually close up in view about what the building looked like. And, um, Yeah, uh, we are screwed. Come on, show my screen so people can see this too. Um, da, 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 da. Of course, 13 floors. This hotel was still how. Yes, yes. Okay. That was a big ass fucking. This would look like up close and personal. Holy shit. Uh, shit. Oh, we find the address. <laughs> find the okay, address. The okay, the ceiling looks kind of weird looking. No offense, it's kind of spooky stuff gonna happen one way or another. Oh, yeah. a cross. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, did you just say that there's a cross? No, it's not a cross. Oh. No, it's just a far away. It's on a highway. So, so I'm just not down to, okay, if we do get recording of some making noise, there's, there's noting stuff down.
I'm kind of curious what else this big building can have. Well, it says here, yes, indeed, is it still haunted? Um, the spirits well, like, of two brothers. Yeah. So it looked like the card is saying the spirit of two brothers indeed that uh, disbodied voice I heard in their old rooms. Rooms 1106 are also seeing their guests and stuff. The spirit okay, so of the. the uh, there is a. Okay, yeah, so th there is a source like the Ghost Hunter's Field Guide right there. Haunted places, okay, yep. World. Worldwide Paranormal.com. That's an interesting website. Your paranormal road trip. So you wait. I we might actually be allowed in there. In there, yeah, because it says your paranormal road trip. Oh, right it's here. all around the world. Okay. I clicked. The I'm website, gonna so... actually save. Hold on, I want to know what my ho my home state got hat. Oh no! Oh what? no! There's several different haunted locations in my hometown, my home state. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> we got the first one. Dear, dear, wait, that's a weird fucking name. Dear filled. Old burial grounds, okay. That actually has, excuse me. There's a house, then they call like a restaurant. Barn stable house? The house with 11 ghosts. Isn't that the one that we already reviewed? Deerfield I don't know. Inn? That's a weird fucking window. Okay, if we do quote code Let's get all this half of this building. We need a goddamn mindset. <laughs> Hawthorne Hotel. <laughs> and Wait, what I the fuck is figured... Hawthorne Hotel? Hawthorne Hotel. So I did my state, and uh, this is in Salem. Hawthorne Hotel's in Salem. Oh no, the famous Hawthorne Hotel. Yeah, uh, the House of Seven Gables Museum. I think this is might also be in Salem. Not sure. The Hammond Castle Museum. Mr. Jack Hammond himself. Mr. Jack. Still enjoy, still enjoying his castle. Ever the spectral host and jokester. Huh. So he's a prankster. Yep, yeah, uh, the Lizzie Borden, Longfellow's Wayside, um, the Morgan House, Porter Phelps, Old Yarmouth, Ropes Man. The fuck kind of name was that? Ropes Click Mansion. It. Click it so we know what the hell it I is. I did click on it. Oh, it's insane. Why am I not surprised? Restless Ropes family spectrum members are upset by the circumstances of their deaths. <laughs> my accident hurt. Oh shit! Oh, You're wait, gonna be what? My your accident death. hurt a lot and killed me because the servants didn't hear my screams. After all I did in my professional life, I was disrespected. Really treated by a mob at the end of my days. Spirits of other former residents quietly visit, sometimes showing themselves in no whatever the fuck that word is. That is a very interesting looking house. Oh, with a very interesting looking entrance.
That looks more like a, a house that would go on a farm, to be honest with you. I don't know what the fuck is that in a goddamn window, but okay. It looks like a piece of a stick. One of New England's most significant and thoroughly documented historic houses. Okay. It was described as being a two and a half story Georgian colonial clapboard mansion with 15 rooms. Ow, my ears. <laughs> uh, 15 rooms. Um. Full of ropes, family memorables, making the museum. Why? Why we should have notes about each location? Uh, if is, oh god damn it! If like a hotel, we should have like new number of, like this room is haunted of two children. So they like to be pranking and that like, to scale you up from bed. Like, oh, when I first saw the name. Ropes Mansion, my head went like, why the fuck would you name it Ropes Mansion? And I guess there was a family there that was, well, with the last name of Ropes, which is weird, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna lie, and it's in Salem, so, like, what the fuck? Interesting. Um, I'm definitely gonna keep this website. I'm surprised, what the fuck? S.A.K. Pierce mansion. A lot of this shit is in Salem. Why am I not fucking surprised? <laughs> Merchant. The Merchant Hotel. Stones Public. Okay. From that angle for the Stones Public. That looks like from the um, Abaddon Hotel angle right fucking there. But I know it's not. Also, welcome back. Hi. Hello. We're looking at hauntedhouses.com. <laughs> yeah, so Jagan um, found this website because if my mouse can fucking go back more, I guess it won't. It must be a dick. Okay, cool. Hold on. Let me re-click on it. Um, because... Uh, no, nope, wrong fucking button. I'm clicking on wrong buttons here. God fucking damn it. Because the website actually had the hotel that we reviewed. And Dragon was the one that found it. Mm -hmm. So, from by these photos, like these were taken really up close, which is kind of cool. In a way. Um, the ceiling is a little fucking weird. I'm not gonna lie on that. It just looks like someone just tried to create a really weird new design in the ceiling. I don't really like that ceiling. Um, I like that though. That That's kind of pretty cool looking. Definitely fucking that that kind of shit takes like so fucking long to design. Damn. Oh, we got one photo there. You know, it's a really bad angle, but okay. That's the famous room. Um, a two someone supposed to be living there. They said that spirit. There's a spirit who lives in that. Yeah, here we go. It was the yeah, son. There's a spirit of a woman that what, uh, yeah, deceived one, one the son. One one o like zero one. That's the room. Eleven o one. Yeah. But then you know it's got the entire description, which is pretty much already been read out by. Um, I feel like we should get more information. Steven. I think. We go there. I think there will be a lot of more information about this. Yeah, it's got all the history for it. It's got the photos. And then it's got the history of the manifestations. 
But then it seems like um, it doesn't affect actually. It it does actually has this section. Is it still haunted? Yes, because of the fucking eleven floor. <laughs> um. And then it's it's got the location right there. And it's got like fucking three different sources and then um your paranormal road trip hunts in Utah. So and then that's when I clicked my state there. So it's kind of a very interesting uh website, not gonna lie. But I'm definitely keeping that fucking website. That's kind of cool. So. That's pretty much of what we were looking at. Because, like, after he put his fucking state in. I'm like, you know what? I should probably put mine in, too. Just to see what would pop up. <laughs> Yeah, you don't really miss much <laughs> when you left. Good times, good times. <laughs> yep. Uh, I have really nothing else to really say about that, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> All, all I can really say is, like, like I said before, I'm pretty sure that's the f only place that they actually haven't physically gone to in person yet. Um, but, like, if we were to actually be there, we can also stop by their house because, well, they live in the same state as that hotel. And I would be like, hey, you know, let's give you some evidence of what we... Might have gone. That would be a great collab if we all went out there. We could visit them and yeah. my friend Ben because he does paranormal investigations too. We could all go somewhere together. That would be pretty tight. We should go to that hotel or somewhere. Yeah. No, that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's so many locations that I want to go into. I mean, as far as like the free town. The you know, the Bridgewater Triangle thing. I'm not really too keen on that because, well, if we were to need someone to go in there with some kind of a fucking rope in hand, we would need to put some highlighted in street vest on you so we can actually fucking see you in the dark. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is, there's a problem of the Bridgewater Triangle. I almost spilled the word, but I swear I said that name quickly. Uh, you said it is that actually the most is that actually the most dangerous location ever? Like this. That's like, why I'm not too keen on that one because it's really, really dangerous. And yes, Steven has been in there, um, and his teens and you know doing graffiti on the fucking cliffs and shit that he shouldn't have been doing. Um, but, I mean, if you're in there during the day, you're fine. But during the night, At you're fine. nighttime, it's a whole new yeah. ball game. Like That's like, when they all come out and play. <laughs> I, I think before we do that, I think we should find out what the creatures come out through there. We should learn a battle of what creature come out to play. Like, uh, That's... Like, mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really too keen on that one. Like, <laughs> I do remember, like, there's a wolf with, like, shredded teeth. Like, almost like a three, shark. Three layers of teeth, yes. Like, I don't want to know what the hell that looked like. I, You know, it's beyond me as a person that loves fucking paranormal and that loves fucking... No, like, how what kind and of wolf shit. is it? I don't think I want to go into a fucking. I don't want to know what a wolf looks like. You know what I mean? I don't want to see Fuck a that. wolf look like. Like, is a black wolf? Is a black wolf? We're gonna ha have a hard time to see it though. Well, like, yeah, because it's a black wolf and it's at night. But I think the only thing you would be able to see is their eyes. 
Yeah. That's gotta be more scary about. Like, and also, they say they have giant snakes coming out of them. So. Well, yes, but no you thing. gotta also understand, John, there's, you know, there's snakes around us and they can get, you know, pretty fucking big, like giant no shit. panthers and shit. No shit. Now, the thing is, my parents always say, I'm like, there's no in hell snakes can I get big. No way. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. But enough yeah, food. They can. In the food, like in the food, like they will get bigger and bigger. Um, we we also even mentioned that day too was like other animals won't go into that fucking forest just because they know. That there's something wrong. Like, they have the instincts. Like, yes, we have coyotes and shit around here, but, like, they're not gonna stop from fucking Freetown. <laughs> they got that fucking instinct of, like, oh, you know, if I step in here, I might get fucking eaten. Like, <laughs> let's not go in here. <laughs> um, I'm trying to. Do some research here for that fucking black dog thing. So, there's a podcast uh, storyline that we kind of started on um, Listen the to- channel. I wasn't sure what the fuck I was hearing at first, but then I forgot that we have snow on the ground, so that's a snow plow. Um... <laughs> What the fuck is that? We got no more snow here, so I'm jealous. Yeah, it kind of sucks. It's just like, I don't know. The storyline for that podcast, let alone for the Bridgewater Triangle, is cool. I like the storyline because, well, my mother and I already finished it, but to start it on here. Is kind of closer. You guys can hear it. Um, because it's literally about of what's in Freetown and of like what goes on in Freetown itself, where mm-hmm. it makes other people look like that they're fucking insane, but they're really not. Um, it's talking about how there's portals being opened, occults going on, you know, people taking their lives, people getting attacked by random weird creatures, you know, a group of other um, investigators or whatever the fuck they call themselves to come to Freetown to close of what was been opening that should have been closed in the first place. Uh, cause I'm fucked up. <laughs> so there's a lot that goes on in Freetown, and I'm just like, damn. Because, like I said to you, Jagan, my mom has encountered fucking Mothman going by in front of her car. Okay, she wasn't high at the time, but her friend was looking down, well, twisting a joint or whatever, fucking. She didn't witness anything, but you know she probably thinks my mom's insane. I know she, she really isn't. I, I should <laughs> not say nothing, but I'm that <laughs> piss off. Like you're looking down. How the hell you don't have your camera out? And we call this shit, Damon people. I want to have well, piss off this shit. <laughs> like I, I said know. before, this was back. In the day, and they didn't have much of no phones camera. and stuff and stuff like that. I know, yeah. but I'm kind of know, like, if you see shit, remember it to your skull, like a goddamn photograph. I'm like, okay, I see that shit. I cannot undo. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing that we can really do, and a lot of people go missing. Because of Freetown itself. That that is the point. If, like, there's stuff out there in the world, you will just 
walk into your pub in like a um, like a hole in like in the world wood. I found so I even just looked up Black Dog and Freetown Bridgewater Mass. And the first thing that pops up is the Bridgewater Triangle, home of Mass Squatch. TikTok. Mass yeah. Excuse me, what? Fucking what the fuck is you know, I'm gonna just click on it and share the screen because I'm I'm really curious on Excuse me, as a fucking a bunch of different things. Hey, I didn't say you can fucking start, damn it. <laughs> yeah, like, so much shit pops up into the air, and I'm just like, I'm trying to fucking get there to pause the fucking video before it actually starts, and then it fucking starts. So it's like, motherfucker. The Bridgewater Triangle. Whoa, man, that's in my backyard. An alleged paranormal hotspot south of Boston where things go bump in the night. Oh. And it's not just ghosts. It's not just cryptozoology or aliens. It's all of it. And and what are we doing Someone today? Someone please right? kill me. I want to find Bigfoot. I brought the Bold and the Beautiful's Emmy-nominated actress, oh, Monica Bell, to recreate some of the Sasquatch stories. Oh, that is something you don't do. I am a fan of this show. And so I reached out to Matt and I was like, hey, oh, I I know. Know. And never did I think that we would be Sasquatch hunting. Hey, Dave. Nice to see you again, man. How you Don't doing go deep. Uh, why the fuck are you doing this? My personal belief Squash is that it. Are you shitting me right now? does seem to have half human traits. He led us to a secret location where we met Rich Brawl. Can I walk out back? Yeah. I mean, no, that's just, uh, I communicate with that. Okay. <laughs> you got a look on your face. Do you hear something? I'm laughing. He wasn't a Bigfoot guy until... About six or seven years ago, I started hearing something walking around out here. I remember everything got quiet. And I, was, I, was, I was actually scratching a ticket. So I was over here doing like a cash word one, you know, like this, and I hear, and I held my phone out like this, and I said, "Come on, where you at?" And also, I hear, oh. "Where you at?" Was that? Rich and Dave's phones are loaded with alleged evidence like that, and big feet pics. That's a big toe. Do you see little fuzzies? You see that tree? Oh yeah. All the bark beating off it. But most of the supposed signs involve tree trunks that were bent a certain way. I I'm a big believer, but with two dumbass. Some of them I look at and I'm like, that's just artwork, man. Did you see here this tree okay. that fallen somehow? You didn't tell me you were a pro Bigfoot hunter, Annika. Well, in the woods of Sudbury, you learn a thing or two. Where'd you hear it? Way out there. That way. That way? Oh, oh god. Oh. Remember that sound we heard? They were like, Is he calling to the squad? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. So we didn't see anything that truly made us go. That's like, what we did, as Dave puts it. If you don't bother them, they won't bother you. Ow, ow. I think I might have just got dung. Right there, spot. Yep, that could be. From the Bridgewater Triangle, I'm Matt Shearer. For more, ask Alexa to play WBZ okay, News Radio on iHeartRadio. Live from Shouldn't. Matt's car, where we want to make sure that he is a responsible driver. I'm sorry. Why are you doing this anyway? Again. Yeah, again? The fuck? I understand the whole damn thing of, oh, we're going to do this for cloud. We're going to do this for poop. No, oh, it's actually the says the killer dog. That's the click one it, that I'm... Click it, click it, click it, click it. Click. This time it's on fucking YouTube. Yeah, guy at blockers, bitch. Ah, suck at blockers. Hi, Cece. Ravenous, bloodthirsty dogs are said to roam the woods of both the Hockamock Swamp and its surrounding communities. In 1976, Abington resident Philip Kane watched in horror when a large black and gray dog ripped open the throats of his two ponies, both of which were killed in the attack. So here you have this thing that's as large as a pony, and he sees it standing over the ponies, ripping their throats out. Kane reportedly fired a pistol at the dog as it fled the scene. The shot I missed its mark. It. The dog Play. disappeared in the forest. Mm -hmm. To see it walk away and disappear just kind of compounded his fear. For three days, there was concerted safari-like hunts 
in that area to try to find this giant dog and nobody ever could. I was sleeping and I was woken by the barking of a dog and after a while I realized it was my dog. When I come out, my dog was about here barking like hell. And uh, the horse had a rope around his neck that came from a slope or a hill up there. And he was lying right about here. And it was rather obvious what happened to me anyway, it was obvious to me. That one made no fucking sense. No. The fuck? I think the police mm. come up, took a look at it. And said, hey, Mac, where did the horse, you know, where did the dead horse come from? And I looked at him. I said, how the hell are I in the I said, all I know is it's got a rope around its neck. And it looks to me like it fell down the hill because, well, I knew it did. Uh, because it belonged to the canes up there. But when it got into the papers and, you know, people heard of a dog, you know, barking at a dead horse, they, they just, you know, added to it and added to it. And then it became, uh, uh, I don't know what you call stories when they get out of... Uh, Urban legend. <laughs> Urban legend. <laughs> Suburban. <laughs> it was escalating, you know, people out with shotguns. And lo and behold, I didn't know whether to laugh at this or get mad. I see three figures going on the other side of the stone wall with the shotguns out in front. Got the picture? Idiots, you know? <laughs> and, and I said to myself, can I swear in this? Oh, absolutely. I said, Jesus Christ, what are they doing out there with those shotguns? I got the kids and got them in the house and I called the police up. I had to. <laughs> Here they are running around with shotguns, ready to kill any probably dogs too. They, they, they were just hunters and this is no place to hunt in Aberdeen, it's too small a town. They were hoping I'd come out and say there was a five foot dog at the neck up here and I just, just, it just didn't happen. I could absolutely say without any doubt in my mind that there was no huge dog out here. <laughs> Interesting. I say interesting just because in the storyline they do say that there's like a giant fucking big black killer dog. Yeah. You know, so like it's so big that you can easily like it can that easily can... catch you. That, that, that the thing is why are you gonna hunt this killer dog? You're I gonna don't... get killed. <laughs> Fucking, we missed everything. And Spooky's just like, you missed it all, Ed. Damn. Just throws him on the bus. I don't right know who, who you two are. I don't, I'm this is on you, both of you oh. now. Who the hell is Ape Go? Ape? I just realized that he Ape? fucking vanished. So what, what the he fuck goes, is Ape? Alright, my phone is blowing up now. I will see y'all later. I didn't even know. <sighs> what the fuck <laughs> It says look over there. Huh? Damn. <laughs> uh yeah, so um Ed, you fucking missed everything. What the hell? <laughs> Damn. That was not even fucking English to my goddamn point of view. Yeah, no. Um. Damn. 
Yeah, when fucking Ape was leaving, I got my fucking phone blown up by a call. I don't know who this is, but they're from Idaho. Or some shit. I don't know, fucking know. It's weird. I don't even know how the fuck they even got my number. But I'm not gonna lie, that that was a pretty interesting. What the hell? Can we block him now? I'm not gonna do that. You can, but I'm not doing that. Why, oh, why, oh, why? Uh, and I know that once someone actually gets on his computer, whatever. We're gonna be not here. <laughs> He's not gonna here. Be We're gonna be finished and all of the shit. Yep, and he didn't get to meet a either quite yet. So sad. So, I know. <laughs> oh, fucking. Ed. You're too fucking funny. But uh, I think it's time to wrap this up and I guess end it because I have nothing else to really say. Mm hmm. So, we will see you guys hopefully next Monday. <laughs> and uh, I'll probably see the rest of you guys probably later tonight. So, mm -hmm. goodbye. And have a good day. Bye. I'm not reading what Ed said. I don't know more. No. Goodbye. Nope. Bye, everyone. I'm not in the door. Rats.